the growler with PD and J. Here to analyze for you today. From growler bed to Jay's got stats. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Growler Podcast. Ah. This is it's proper for it does feel like a little bit of an after hours yes. growler here for us, Jay. It doesn't so feel like it, it is. It it is an after hours growler for us. And so the soft <laughs> tones of our intro are just perfectly fitting as we uh, wrap up what's been we kind of been sitting around, Jay, for yeah. about a day and some change saying, all right, well, one more move. And and we'll go into the we'll hit the pod room we'll hit the live stream let's go talk to the people and we waited and we waited <laughs> and Bengals Nation got very angry and very yes. antsy and people were texting and they weren't happy and people were cursing names and then finally tonight we get Sheldon Rankins as the first player added to that top positional priority in the defensive tackle room to go with everything else that we have so we've got a lot to get to we'll focus a lot on that the latest thing that's happened tonight jay but there's a lot that has gone on since we uh sort of last convened yeah quite a bit and i mean i don't know is it the the people getting so angry about them not doing anything i I kind of equate it to the the angry tweets in the second quarter when the bengals are losing 10 to 3 and the season's over all the game all play calling's (laughs) terrible this this game's over i'm turning the tv off it's it just people just let things play out. And I, I think Rankin, I know we're going to get to him later. I think Rankins is a good signing. I, I, I have some questions, but I, I, you know, they, they had to get somebody and they did. And, you know, maybe it's a start. Maybe, maybe there's another piece there. Yeah. There's a lot to um, get to get to with, with all of that. I, I think we're only just beginning, but let's kind of, let's kind of take this kind of piece by piece. Um, you're right. I mean, there's a lot of the, the thing why I didn't think there was much freak out necessarily is that the targets and the guys that I think you expected them to be going at, at least that that seemed to be in their range and the options positions they needed weren't gone. I mean, they were most of them. There were names that went off the board, but there was still kind of the people that you most thought they would be interested in were still sitting there. And, and so for that fact, it was okay. This is still okay right now. It's just taking a long time. Mm -hmm. And, and I think the sense that I sort of got as the day went on was what a, a lot of people maybe thought is that this defensive tackle market stinks like there's not much depth there there's not a lot of the types of players they were looking for there was guys paid at the top top but they weren't going to go there Mm -hmm. and there wasn't a lot of that uh, of that middle ground where what you did see a lot of that in some of the other positions they took advantage of earlier right running back safety even tight end these other where there was a lot of different names they kind of choose from that would make sense for them defensive tackle was not as much that. No, and and you know what it stinks. You said it stinks. It stinks like Ben Gay because a lot of these guys are <laughs> not in the the age range where the Bengals want to go. And Rankins Rankins counts among that. And um, you know, it you get down to it and you get stuck a little bit. I, I think you have to make some concessions. And and I just wrote a story about how you know they're stepping outside of their comfort zone a little bit. And um, it, it's it's not by choice. It's more, more by necessity. Yeah. Well, you're right. Um, and that's sort of the theme of the same thing I was looking at too, is this was, this was not where they normally go because they're what they wanted. Wasn't where they normally go. There wasn't a 26 year old Sheldon Rankins. Um, they went after 26 year old Sheldon Rankins at one point in time and couldn't get him. Then they went after him a couple years later and couldn't get him and said, man, we really like that Sheldon Rankins, <laughs> but it couldn't get him. And now they see a going to be 30 year old turning 30 next month, Sheldon Rankins and said, you know, don't really like going there. In fact, he's going to be one of three 30 year olds that are going to be the oldest players currently on the Bengals roster, um, along with Karis and Hilton. Um, And they had to do it, though. And what struck me 
That's a big old whopper of a deal for Sheldon, for a 30-year-old Sheldon Rankins. Yeah. That's above market value. That's above what you would have thought. It's certainly above what they would normally pay for somebody that has asterisks next to their name and who's only going to be really a rotational piece. This is the B.J. Hill compliment, Jack. Yeah. I mean, $13 million per. And now, granted, we've got to see all the details of it and everything, but it's only two years, so there's only so many ways you can work the, the magic on those numbers. They hit. And so – that's a lot of money for what they're doing, but that goes to show how badly they needed it and how few options there really were out there. They found themselves in where they don't want to be, which is in a bidding war with Houston, hmm. trying to get Sheldon, Sheldon to come in here and not feeling like they had many other options. And so they had to go to places that are uncomfortable. And two years, 26 for a 30 year old rotational three, three technique. That's an uncomfortable place for this team, but they had to do it. And it's uncomfortable too because it's not really what they they need the big run stopper in there, and, and that they're still without that part of it. So because Rankins is he was not very good against the run last year. I think he's sixty seventh out of seventy third out of seventy three uh, defensive tackles that qualified in run stopping, and he had the second highest missed tackle percentage among defensive tackles in the league last year. Now now he's not always been like that. That's, you know, the year before he was actually pretty decent against the run. But that's when you start wondering the age he is getting up there. Is Are, are you starting to see the decline? So that that is a little concerning. Um, I don't know, you know, where what this means. DJ Reader, if, if he's taking visits and and it sounds like he's maybe going to get closer to market value. This isn't a case where he's going to teams are afraid that he's not healthy and, and the Bengals could swoops sweep him up on a, a one-year kind of prove it deal so i don't know where they turn to to get the run stopper because they they talked about at the combine how important that is to yeah. in this division to have that and they don't right now they don't now th that's the other side they're not done i mean that's right. that position is gonna be filled um there really aren't any in the draft it's like Tavondre sweat <laughs> and no one I mean, that that is that there's not like nose tackles that you're going to go find. So they have to get somebody in there. Now, I think I, I want to talk more about rankings before I get too far into mm -hmm. Tier Tart and, and DJ Reader. So so table that for a second. Um, back to rankings. I want to, you know, Paul's got stats. All right. I'm going to I'm going to drop mine in here. OK, so kind of had this chart ready to go ready for whoever they landed. I had Armstead in there at one point. And a few other people of of really, you know how much they didn't have enough juice up the middle in the pass rush mm -hmm. last year. Let's just talk PFF pass rush here. Uh, win percentage. DJ Reader out of this is out of ninety eight qualifiers and in interior defense across the league last year. DJ Reader ranked nineteenth. BJ Hill fifty fourth. Zach Carter eighty seventh. Okay, Sheldon Rankins tenth. 14.6% win rate um, in, in the pass rush. As far as pass rush grade, you have DJ Reader 13th, Rankins 29th, Hill 51st, Carter 84th. Again, what they didn't have. I mean, they didn't even have Reader back. And, and, and so same thing, pass rush productivity, true pass set win rate, where Sheldon Rankins was 11th. This is what they didn't have. Now, mm -hmm. You know, he is older. You're you're looking at here's your 500 snaps of shot. He's Larry Ogunjobi. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is to a T. Like, you're not asking him to come play 800 snaps. At least you hope not. You hope BJ Hill stays healthy. You're not asking him to do that. You're asking him to do what he's really done the last few years, which is be a just nightmare as a pass rusher and do it for about half the snaps and that makes bj hill better that makes sheldon rankins better that makes the bengals defensive pass rush better so many more things that you can do you can even put bj and sheldon together that's when they were at their best and that's what they needed and that's why they overpaid because mm -hmm. they knew how how bad they needed it and how much he was one of the last remaining guys really that fit you know what he's not going to be able to do this year that he's done in the last few years torment joe burrow <laughs> he had six sacks last year, and three of them were against Burrow in that that game at at Paycor. Um, 
the, in 2022 when he was with the Jets. He had uh, six tackles, a season high, and one, a sack against Burrow. And I'm trying to remember, maybe you do, that that Halloween game in 2021, I, I he didn't have the interception, but wasn't he the one that blew up the play where they tried to throw it one way and he was right there and, and Burrow went back and threw it the other way and it got defl- it deflected and – I, yeah. I just remember him being a big part of that one. Um, and then when he was at the Saints in 2018, they came to pay court and he had a sack of Burrow. He has five career sacks against the Bengals in four games. And, you know, it's another situation where much like Geno Stone, I, I, I go back to the Bengals and Joe Burrow and mm-hmm. their reaction after that game. And Alex Kappa, <laughs> who's really happy he doesn't have to block Sean Rankins, <laughs> who made Alex Kappa look like we haven't seen really anyone yeah. make Alex Kappa look. You know what I'm saying? And we just blew him up, and, and it was so notable of, wow, d- d- that's something, okay? Houston's you know strategy in pass rushing was a, a bit unique. I mean, they were every down, go get the pass rusher, stop the run on the way to the quarterback if it happens mm-hmm. to run into you. And so Sheldon has been okay against the run in the past at times in his career. It's not, it's not been like a forever liability. Right. So we, I think in Lou's system where they're not asking him to be like that all the time, I, I don't think, I think you're confident he can be fine against the run and not some super liability. And he's going to be more of a pass rush situation type mm. guy for you anyway. So I don't really have a huge issue with that. The bottom line is though, this just brings them exactly what they need. I think it makes everybody else better. Um, any more Rankins thoughts before we move on to what's next and start talking about? Okay. No. All right. So DJ Reader, they have to fill that spot. All right. DJ Reader's on a visit to Detroit. Um, I, I think that's about the physical, right? I mean, yeah. Everybody need, needs to know what's going on with with DJ health wise, and I, I don't know how active. I'm sure positive the Bengals are active in those discussions. I mean, they want to know what's going on. I still, as much as everyone loves DJ Reader, don't think that they are active in paying DJ Reader third, fourth day of free agency money. No. Okay. Their idea of DJ Reader being back is on some kind of a one-year deal where the market never materializes for him, and it looks like it may be doing that in Detroit. Um, and and I and I hope for DJ's sake, I hope that is the case. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't still don't think that he's where this lands. I still think it's Tier Tart. Mm-hmm. I, I still think this is where this lands. He is. He is the run. He can be a run stuffer. He can be a big tough guy. He can, you know, he can play multiple positions. He's versatile in there. Um, he, at his best, he was very DJ Reader ish. No one was. No, no one's at that level. But in you know, before his disaster year last year, um, if you feel like you're betting on him being third year Tier Tart, and he's still young, there's no reason why he can't do that. Um, he can do those things where, where you could feel comfortable putting him out there. And if you added tart and Rankins in there, and then maybe you're throwing another draft pick. Okay. Now you're cooking. Now you have supplemented. Now you have taken real swings at fixing the interior. Um, and, and you feel a lot better about, about that entire spot. I still think that's where this ends. Um, but they've got to go through that process DJ's got to go through the process, whatever's going into on in Detroit, and they got to negotiate again. So we'll, we'll see where that goes tomorrow. I think this one for the three technique was a uh, a long journey to get there, <laughs> as as Bengals fans know that waited this out. Uh, but I, I still think that's where the sense. Do you see it differently, Jay? No, I, I mean, if all things equal, then yeah, DJ Reader is who you want, but it, it's not equal. Money is a big part of this, and it'll be interesting to see because I still. I don't know how he passes a physical that that's a that's a very hard injury to come back from. And it was just four months ago. So I, I don't I don't know how he passes a physical if that's what a signing is going to be dependent on. And I wonder, too, you know, does does rankings rank and sign in in Cincinnati? I know they're different players, but 
does that mean Houston goes in heavy because they Houston wanted Rankins back? Do, do they go in heavy on Tart now and, and try not to lose both of those guys, even though they are different kinds of players? And so, uh, but I, I, I'm with you. I because you had him on the pick where we we were picking guys at positions, and and I love that pick. I, I do think that he would be a great fit. Um, obviously, everybody with the fans, the 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 front office the players would love to get DJ reader back. I just don't know how feasible it's going to be unless it drags on until June, July, August, whatever that is. And, and he has to settle. Um, and so this will be big. Well, it'll be, if he get if it doesn't happen in Detroit, then, then maybe you start wondering it is a, a physical issue and, and this is going to drag out a little longer and you, but I don't know that the Bengals can afford to wait and see if that happens. They, they need to – that because that position is so important in this division to have a run stopper in there, and they cannot wait to see what happens with DJ Reader. And you can do both. You I could, mean, look, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you could sign Tart tomorrow and hope to still sign DJ mm -hmm. Reader. Like, why – there's no reason that you could sign – I mean, Tier Tart hasn't earned a starting spot to come in immediately with where he's at and what happened with him last year. I, I don't – you know, he's insurance. And in my mind, if you feel like you're waiting on reader or whatever that is, yeah. uh, and maybe there's another name that they have in mind, there's not a ton out there. Um, but I, I just, to me, I don't, you know, I don't think that you don't say both of these could happen. You need depth there anyway. I mean, you need, you're still needing a Tupo, right? I mean, we're <laughs> still talking about needing a backup piece there too. And again, the draft is not, full of these guys like there's really none and so it's okay to double up it's okay to do that and 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 be fine with they have room if plenty of spaces still do work I, I i mentioned today that the mock off season sheet i updated it put the new names in there that they've signed under the cap numbers they have and you can see there's still plenty of room to work with here for what they normally do okay not you know, not the other stuff where, oh, how much do they really know what they do? There's still plenty of room to work with. You, you still need a right tackle situation to be fixed. And there's that market hasn't moved an inch because of this draft. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you need to fix defensive, figure out defensive tackle. And you have still have room after that. So to me, there's plenty of time available for them to take a shot at, at that spot. It's, it's, it, you could take two runs at it and have no problem. Yeah. There's and there's other spots too they could add. Yeah, you know, cheap with another running back, another tight end. I don't even know. You think Tupo's off the board? I think he would be so cheap, and he's a guy that's familiar with him. I wouldn't. I wouldn't rule out him coming back on a one year. Well, team. yeah. I mean, you could sign if him you, to a come compete in camp that minimum. Yeah. I, I mean, right. there's no reason that wouldn't be the case. But I think they're looking to move on there. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking to get me younger and more dynamic i mean they'd love to put some uh some younger players in there for sure I, all that will play they're not done is is the whole yes. point there um we talk about the offensive tackle market next i mean again like i said because of the draft it's just sat there i mean the names that we talked about at the beginning almost almost all of them are still just sitting there i mean tyron smith's still there makai beckman's still there Trent Brown's still there. I mean, all of these guys are still sitting there that you think could come in and be your bridge with a offensive lineman at number 18 combo, which is, is really the ideal way to approach the offensive line for them right now. So that's still sitting there for them too. Nice. And, and that's, I think everybody, that's, that's the game of chicken there too. Mm -hmm. you know, Jonah Williams went, he signs with Arizona two years and, and 30 million, but for, you know, there's not a lot of movement even happening uh, at that spot. Yeah. And I mean, Becton's younger, but Brown, we talked about a lot. He's over 30. Does this, does the Rankins one kind of set a little template there and they're, they're willing to do it again with Trent Brown. Um, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Becton famously doesn't want to play right tackle. Trent Brown has played that a lot in his career. Yes. I mean, we'll, I think there's a lot of things they would have to work through on all of those once they get there. But again, that's, those are the next steps. Those are the things that they're keeping an eye on right now and, and kind of waiting to see where those markets develop. Well, all right. We, we've touched on that now. Let's flip forward uh, backwards. I should say, let's go backwards to really, this has happened since the last time we talked 
and uh, Mike Gesicki added at tight end. Jay, I want to I want to hear your thoughts on this. I have some. Um, did you did you like or or not like the the Gesicki signing? Because this is different than we've seen from them in their uh, rent a tight end mode. Neither. I loved it. I, I think wow. it's a great you in love. Yeah. I mean, so earlier and I was, I kind of did a little roadmap position by position. I had Hunter Henry and, and Gesicki as two of the top targets for the Bengals at tight end. And I mean, I like just based on what he is, what he brings, I thought he'd be a great, just an incredible third down red zone weapon. That's, I mean, they stole him. I, I thought he would yeah. be way more expensive than he was. And you word Hunter Henry come in. He was what six or seven a year. The Patriots yeah. brought him back for a lot. And I just I think it's a huge value pick. Um that they do I mean, he's it's kind of a tight end. I mean, he's he's more of a, a slot receiver, um, lined up half the time in the slot, just like Tanner Hudson did. Um, but I, I just I think it's a great great addition and you pair him with with drew sample because you talk all the time about them being in 11 so much well you put him in the slot you've got two tight ends on the field but you're you're still in 11 personnel technically so um i think there's a lot they can do with mike gesicki i and you know i, I we've talked i'm a ohio state fan and that guy watching him at penn state it was just like he was incredible and he's had he had a i'm surprised he hasn't had a bigger year, career than he has in the league, but he's still, he has three seasons where he's had at least five touchdown receptions. And you just, you don't get that a lot from Bengals tight ends. I know Croft had seven uh, a few years ago, but um, he, he's just consistently finds the end zone and makes contested catches. And I, I just, I think it's a great signing. I agree. I mean, two and a half million. Yeah. At one year is wow. You know, with some incentives in there, but I mean, Again, it's it's the Joe Burrow tight end effect. Mm -hmm. It's very you know Hurst was one year three and a half. Irv was one year one point eight, and now you get Gesicki at one year one point two point five at at the idea of what they'll get next year. The same thing happened with Uzama and Hurst. Not quite Irv Smith, but Irv Smith even found a team. Good for him. Uh, you know the but here's here's why I like it. I I like it. I am more intrigued by it hmm. because I, I feel like this is them learning from what happened with Tanner Hudson last year of man, jo Joe loves this guy. He really fits them in their ability to just play to his strengths of get everybody out there in the route and, and play basically four wide receivers. Well, when they're in 11 personnel with Gesicki, they're basically in 10. Okay. They don't mind that. Joe don't mind that. Okay. And if they're in 12 personnel with Sample and Gasicki, they're basically oh, in 11, yeah. which is where they want to live all the time anyway. And the ability to put him out there and he works the slot a little bit more. He's your slot guy, but you can also, you know, run with your. He's not going to maul anybody over, but he's bigger and he's a great red zone target and he's a great third down target. And they can use him down. He's Tanner Hudson plus plus because his range down the field. You know, he you you look at throw out the. I'm just not holding anybody up to whatever was happening in New England. Like throw that thing out. I don't count anything mm -hmm. about against Mike Gesicki from this year, who he was in Miami, for those seasons before he left Miami was a guy who averaging eleven and a half yards per reception, you know, and six hundred yards a season. That's without being what we know the baseline of a Joe Burrow tight end is. Okay. I mean, his ability to now go up the seam and make those plays on those deep crossers and get out there and go over the top of everybody on those back end lines, they haven't had that. Mm -mm. They haven't had anything like that. And now you've got Joe Burrow, Mr. Accuracy, throwing, throwing to him. Uh, it's wide open and they don't care. Like, they're happy to put as many receivers out there as they possibly can anyway. And it's also a reaction to, hey, more confidence in your offensive line. This offensive line isn't the one that always needs help, always needs a chip, 
all they they have confidence. I think they're going to fix. They're going to get right tackle in there, and they like what the other pieces are. You can go with five more often and be confident, and and you're just you're making everyone nervous. Uh, Charlie Goldsmith had a great tweet that he pulled out of a co- he blew the cobwebs off of it from Bill Belichick <laughs> talking about Kasiki, talking about how he's he's really in today's game a true. You really don't know how teams can defend him because he really is a receiver out there, yeah. even though you still have him doing tight end things. And it really is a tough thing for teams to deal with. And for a Bengals team that likes to spread it out more than anybody and loves being 11 more than anybody, he's really a lean. And I think it's an eye opener from their old philosophy of the Swiss army knife tight end that needs to be able to do everything to, hey, Let's not hide what we're doing here and just have a guy that maybe he does give us a little extra if we decide to block with him, but go cover him. We dare you. Yeah, because look at his, his size and his length and the average size of slot corners. I mean, yeah, they, they're going to have a hard time matching up with him. Yeah, no question. I mean, and he's and he's provided – it's been a hard – Matchup for for people all around the league. I'm not going to use matchup nightmare. I know. I avoid it. <laughs> We're live. I don't want Dave. I don't want Dave to be watching and like text me that he's angry with me for using matchup nightmare. I've been trying to send him as many people using bag as possible yeah, because yeah. he really is hating that. Uh, and so I, I'm continue. So so people, if you if you every time you see a bag tweet, make sure you're sending it to Dave. Really doesn't like it. <laughs> Friend of the Bengals, David Mulligan, has been tweeting up a storm and using bag in bag, every yeah. one, and I keep sending them to Dave over and over <laughs> again because I know he's really, really enjoying that. Um, all right, so that's uh, Gesicki signing. Make sure we we touch on that. Okay, more. More has happened. More has happened. What else do we got? Nick Scott let go. I don't. It wasn't a huge. Obviously, not a huge surprise. I think everybody. I I, I, I did think because he's. It's not a huge savings. I mean, you're saving 2.3 right. against the cap. You're taking on two and dead. Um, so, he's, I mean, he would be a good third safety and special yes. teamer who knows your system. Um, $2.3 billion, you can do a little more with that probably than, than Nick Scott, I guess, is the idea. Or you're opening yourself up to whoever. One of these millions of veteran safeties that are out there, who knows? Maybe no one wants Bob Von Bell. And he comes home and can be a backup. I don't. I don't know any of these. I mean, it could be anything. Or Tyson Anderson's there, and you're drafting another safety um, to maybe come in in the future. Whatever it is, um, you know, I think that there's plenty of options there, and you didn't have to have Nick Scott. I might have considered keeping him just for the the special teams role, but I get it. Two point three mil is not nothing. It almost made me think that they're. There's something's in, something is in the works, and they're close to another safety. Because you're right, it it wasn't a lot of money. He even after he lost the starting job, he didn't really rock the boat or cause a stink. He he, he accepted that demotion to, to Jordan Battle, and now you cut him. And if 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 they're moving Dax Hill to corner, he can always move back to safety. But if you're moving him to corner, you you don't you I mean you have one other safety on the roster and that's Tyson Anderson who has played zero defensive snaps in his career. Um, so I, I think they're leaving themselves thin there by by cutting him and that's why I think maybe something's in the works and they're close to signing another veteran safety in in free agency. Or you just do view Dax as your hybrid, yeah. As your as your look if something happens to Battle or Geno Stone. Dax is there and he's maybe he's a part of three safety sets. I mean, mm-hmm. we're there's still TBD on on how that all is going to totally play out. So you 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 can view Dax as your third safety and right. obviously you'd feel really good about that. Um but that's another part of this equation that's still kind of fuzzy. We have a availability on Thursday. Yeah. Uh with a couple of the new guys that we're expecting in the afternoon. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to get some insight on a number of different things throughout that process, um, including what Geno Stone's presence means for Dax Hill and and beyond. What else is happening there? Uh, so that's uh, that's that's where we're at with that. Other than that, um, we get the official Joe Mixon trade, the conditional seventh. Uh, Joe sends out a goodbye, and you know the the list of 
Marvin, what was it? Someone called them last of the Marvicans to me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Hubbard. Yeah, that's it. That's it right now. Last, uh, last of the Mars. I, I actually, I went and looked because, you know, you've got Mixon moving on. Tyler Boyd's a free agent. Tupo's a free agent. I went and I looked at the the five longest tenured Bengals Benger, as it stands now. And it's it's Sam Hubbard, Drew Samples two, Jermaine Pratt's three, because he was drafted one round after Sample, then Travion Williams, who was sixth round pick in that draft. And then number five, the fifth longest tenured Bengal on this roster is Joe Burrow. <laughs> That's how fast things have turned over. Get used to that. I mean, it happens. You know, it what we're seeing, I mean, what we're seeing here, this was this was something that you know I I felt like I took some heat at the end of the season when I wrote the end of an era column about look, I, I felt like this was the end of that Super Bowl era in a lot of ways because the foundation so many of the foundational culture pieces of that could be gone maybe will be gone and it's playing out a little bit right now i mean yeah. if you end up if if let's say reader signs in detroit tomorrow and you lose jonah zach taylor's first draft pick mm -hmm. and starting offensive lineman from the super bowl the only one that remained from the super bowl dj reader his biggest signing biggest culture move they lost, they've lost Von Bell. You know, it was one of those big culture moves, such a big part. Jesse Bates. I mean, and then a woozy, a boy, a woozy a, all of these players that were, I mean, absolute center circle of what made the Bengals the mm -hmm. Bengals in that Super Bowl season gone. It's not saying that they can't go to the Super Bowl or that this isn't the Joe Burrow era. It's that. That next level of that, uh, the rest of that center core has to evolve. Like you, you, you added some. You do have Ted Karras, and you do have Alex Kappa, and and you do have some some veterans that have become that and grown into that in some ways. But they really need the Logan Wilsons and the Cam Taylor Brits and some of the other younger players, um, even Jamar Chases of of that group to elevate into something bigger into something that has real momentum and, and and a next step that can make a team special because yes obviously burrow chase higgins like that's part of it but you know what made that Bengals team in the super bowl special was so, so much of everything else on the intangible side and the on the field side and they just lost so much of that has gone out the door that I, you know, that has to. It, that's what the NFL is. It's a constant state of churn and replace and grow into roles and find the next leaders. They really need that, and that, that's why that why I wrote that. Then it wasn't a negativity of like this team can never succeed again. It's that that real soul of that team needs to be replaced in a lot of ways, and and Burrow counts in that group that needs to continue to take over leadership. He's not the most vocal guy. He's an unbelievably innate leader, it, you know, understands, un, you know, incredibly how to push every button in the room and people follow him everywhere. But maybe he needs to be more vocal too. maybe everybody that's a part of that core needs to be more of that. And and so I, I think that's something that's in front of them right now and, and what that is. And they're doing they're looking for that while one of those stars once out. In T. Higgins, right? And they're mm -hmm. dealing with that too. So it's just a lot. There's a lot on the plate of sort of a lot of culture setters, a lot of leadership out the door and trying to figure out where the rest of it ultimately comes from. It's a very long-winded soliloquy by me, and I apologize. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not just the heart and soul. I'm, I'm trying to run through in my head. But if you think about the, the starting 22 in the Super Bowl and – the the supposed who we think the 22 starters are going to be an opening day this year what are we seven eight holdovers i, I mean, have i had that in that, that column i that's what that was the main piece of my column was the uh, the super bowl roster and and cross you can cross so cross many them. of them off i mean there's just very few that it, it, it's it's crazy i mean it's it's crazy to, to look at when you see it and now as we've seen so many of these players that look like they're all going to go elsewhere 
um, potentially. Obviously, still a couple mm-hmm. left, but um, it's even more pre- prevalent. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, speaking of Tyler Boyd, not sure where he's going to land, <laughs> uh, but Deontay Johnson leaving from Pittsburgh. Boy, it's really felt like going home could be a thing for TV. I mean, it would make sense for Pittsburgh, who's trying to figure out what Russell Wilson's going to do for him. They've got a new offense. Um, TB, I, you know, you can just you can just feel that one in your bones a little, can't you? Uh, you go against the Bengals, get to go back. It's always meant so. Pittsburgh's always meant yes. so much to him. You know, whether from high school to playing at Pitt, it's been a big deal for him. Every game they go back there, um, they need a slot. Hmm. They could use anybody that knows how to make plays. Uh, so that feels like it could be. I've, I've heard Jets rumors swirling out there. They're looking to, but I really feel like that's where it ends. We'll see, I, but I feel like that's where it ends for TV. I hope so. I, I think that would be great for him to go there and end his career there. And, you know, it, he is getting older and and you'd hate to see him go to New York and maybe not be as good as he's been and the, the tough media there. And it's a bad situation for him. I think Pittsburgh would be a great situation for him to, to land in. And it just kind of, I know Bengal fans probably don't want to see that. They don't want to have to play against him two times a year, but there's like a, a weird little theme going on in free agency this year where there's so many t- guys moving within their divisions and, and that would just follow suit if, if TV ends up. And you're right. He just he he still has that soft spot in his heart. It's his home. I, I mean, it would just be a, a tremendous thing for him to be able to go back there, whatever. And maybe he doesn't end his career there. Maybe it's one year. Maybe it's two. And he plays beyond that. But um, for for TV, I, I just think that would be great. I, I hope it happens for him. Yeah. Um, I mentioned Mixon with the goodbye earlier. Um, you know, people probably saw that Bengals had a video, you know, Houston looks like a nice spot for him. We cut, we talked about Mixon the other day. Jay, did you have stats on that? I have, I have a potential Jay's got stats. Am I wrong on that? No. Yeah. I, so I, I was wondering, I only went to 2000 cause there's a lot to get through, but I was, how many times has a, a veteran player just been traded straight up for a seventh round pick? Um, and so since 2000, there's been 33 of them. Eight have involved the Texans. 25% of these trades, it's just like their go-to. And they just did it before they did mixing. They they traded uh, Mac- Malik Collins for a seventh-round pick. Um, so it's there are some names on there. You you would you would think maybe these are a lot of the and a lot of them aren't big names. They're kickers on there, and and but some other names that have been just traded straight up for a seventh round pick, Isaiah Simmons, uh, John U. Smith, the tight end uh, who just signed a big deal with the, with the dolphins, Mark Ingram, the running back did it. So it's, it's not necessarily, I mean, people look at it and, and say, Oh, you got traded for a seventh round pick, the bag of balls kind of, you know, analogy. I don't think that's the case. Um, and, and I do, I think Joe, you know, we talked about in the last pod, I think Joe's got something left. He just, what, his skill set is right now doesn't fit the Bengals, but I I think with with the Texans running a lot of play action under center, I, I think he'll be a good fit there, and uh, you know, be interesting to see maybe when the uh, preseason schedule comes out. It'll be very interesting if uh, Houston comes to Cincinnati for one of those games. You're thinking preseason? Why you're you're making well? They're not playing matchup predictions. They're not playing in the regular season. I just think it would yeah. be be cool for Mixon. It's one thing to to pen a goodbye, and a lot of those are. I don't know, just perfunctory, but you could you could feel it in that how heartfelt that was, and, and what the city has meant to him and his time here in Cincinnati. And you don't you don't get that actual goodbye, that reception from the fans. And I think if they don't play in the regular season, but if they were to come back here somehow in, in the preseason, I think that would be a really cool moment for Joe to to, yeah. to feel and hear the fans. And I know we with the long thing about the the culture and the foundational core of the Super Bowl thing was really set off by Mixon, which is what started that rant. I didn't even I mean, that's really yeah. I mean, he was so much the juice yes. uh, and energy of those teams and such a big part of part of that, too. And now that, that's what happens. I mean, the league churns, but and, and he's he's a big part of that here, uh, obviously, locally. All right, let's um, let's go. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to. Oh, can we update the competition? Cause I want to, I need to like, I need to get my points on the board. We did our, we did our pick. We have two, we're doing two weeks 
This week, so we're at the halfway point. We're at halftime. We each picked five players. Uh, most real, trying to pick who the Bengals exactly would sign. I mean, I'm, I'm setting this up like I don't know what it is. I got three yeah. points. Yeah, I'd rather not on the do board. this. I got two on the board. I put a two-pointer on Geno Stone. Bam. Zach Moss, bam, for one point. Feeling good. Look, get me some tart. Give me some tart, and I think this thing is lo- is locked down. I think it's over. I think it's over already, but you're right. That would that <laughs> would seal it because he's that would be a two point move. So that would get you to five. That would yeah. So um, I had Jordan Whitehead. He's he's off the he's signed elsewhere, and I had Daquan Jones, and he's he he went back to Buffalo. So I only have you three picks you left. Can't catch me. No. Well, you I can. JK Dob- you need J.K. Dobbins. I've got Trent Brown. That would be worth two, and oh, I think that's yeah. a decent possibility. And then yep. either Dobbins or Edwards Hilaire, and that would get me tied with you. But you're right. You still have Becton. I have Becton have and Tart. Tart. And Hayden Hurst. I and don't know. Hayden Hurst. That's correct. I, yeah. I think that yeah, – who knows? It's probably sailed, but you never know. Probably, yeah. Uh, but still. All right. Feeling good. Feeling good there. Uh, feels good. I'm not going to lie. I, um, I think you've all pretty much clinched the growler bet where we uh, – Bengals free agents, the top five a- AAV – um, yep. You had 42.1. I had 27.7. Uh, so far, the three highest are at 30.5. So I've already missed the mark. They're already above me, and there's two guys still to go. Tyler Boyd's going to add to that, and who who knows who else. But Jonah at 15 a year, Awuzie at 12 a year, and Sample at three and a half a year. Um, I think I'm going to lose that one too. Oh, man. Feeling good. Rough Look at start. this. We're going on. Uh, did have, speaking of the growler bet with the update, uh, I did want to give some credit to Jason Dobos. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, or maybe I was supposed to put a B in there and spot Dobbs. I apologize, Jason. You emailed me a song uh, to sing uh, for this free agent bet. And so <clears throat> I think I'm going to do it. We're really? live. What else? Do I, it's late. What else do I got to do? We might as well. Okay. He says this week's growler bet will be to the tune of closing time by semisonic i really should i should have saved this for the end of the episode uh, we're yeah. not we're, we're not totally but we're wrapping up so we'll get weird right um <clears throat> he says singing time open all the doors and let them out into the league signing time turn over the roster because you can't keep everyone signing time Bengals have their own plan, so you can't get much guaranteed. Signing time. They'll earn 37.7 to not stay here. I know who I want to sign these guys. I know who I want to sign these guys. I know who I want to sign these guys. guys. Sign them large i apologize to everyone i apologize to everyone our live numbers just went down like 40 i apologize i didn't want it to be like this but it's late it's been a long week and jason sent me a song and so we sing it if you want just remember you submit stuff that's weird in the growler the growler bet it tends to show up uh all right you want you want a little music trivia that song yes. that that song is not about closing time at a bar closing time it is, what is it act, about? it's about childbirth the the guy that uh from semi-sonic that wrote it was challenged to write a song about childbirth and that is closing time you can't stay here you, you can't you, i forget the words <laughs> you don't have to go you home don't have to go home but here. you can't stay here that he's talking about the womb and so if you, you go back and listen to it it, it, it wow you get it but it's Big yeah it's, yeah it's a little bit of music trivia Good possibility I edit that out for the audio version, Jay. <laughs> you don't like it? <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't have sounded good. I know it didn't sound good. Oh, you mean uh, the singing? Right. I thought you meant my trivia. No, your trivia is great. <laughs> I will absolutely leave the tri- leave the trivia. I, I don't know. Should I d- dare I dare I pop into the comments of people just telling me to to shut up and stop? Uh, yeah, no, no one's happy. No one's happy. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, yeah, this is bad. I agree. I agree with all of you. Yeah, I'm not even. I'm getting. See, this is. This, I why I shouldn't even have the comments up. Hey, it's free, uh, people. What do you expect? 
Yeah, it's free on YouTube. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I will. Um, I'll be editing that out. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go uh, to what do we got left? Arby's, right? Arby's is all we got left. Do you have any uh, any Arby's for me right now as you wrap it up? I just I I almost, I almost hesitate to bring it up because it's just going to lead to more. But the the Justin Jefferson thing is just exhausting, and I you can't go anywhere. <laughs> not it's not just Twitter. It's it's friends texting me. It's the bartender at the place I went to last night. It's stranger ever. Everybody's asking if it's real and if it's legit, and it's just, I don't know. I, it's, it's even the Bengals social Twitter account is responding to it. It's just, they're basically making fun of it to be exactly. like, y'all stop. But it, <laughs> please, it, 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 I don't know. It's almost, it almost gives it more legs by, by them acknowledging it. It's just, it's so ridiculous. It makes no sense on any level. And, it's just it's frustrating. Uh, sometimes you laugh at some of these things, but this one is just just head shake. I mean, it sounds great, right? <laughs> like there's just no. And I, I I love I love like look. It's Olivia's friend at Kroger started all of this, and then some <laughs> random person friend. I mean, where <laughs> we you just I feel like we just need to we're just gullible as a, as an entire nation. And, and it's, it's, I, I get it. It's so fun to think of. Can you, I mean, can you imagine a world where you're paying what it's got? Justin Jefferson's turning down 30 plus million dollars a year from the Vikings and the Bengals are going to give up everything they can to pay him. And then Jamar and Burroughs money kicking in on top of it. Burroughs going to restructure after six months. No, I mean it's it's fun, and you're right. It was it was it was absolutely everywhere. I, I did. I, I just had to tell people stop, stop sending me the screenshot of the my friend from Kroger. <laughs> All right, not happening. Okay. Um, I have one. I have I have an apo- another apology to make. I'm full of apologies tonight. One more apology to make. Uh, apology to Matt Evans on Twitter. I'm sorry, bro. My, my bad dog. <laughs> he said uh, there was a report. The report of Jake Elliott getting four years, six million dollars per year. Tie basically up with Justin Tucker for most for a kicker. Evan McPherson is extension eligible. I sent out a gif of like, you know, Evan McPherson, Mark Cuban taking notes. Oh, that's interesting. That's nice. Right. Because he's he's on deck. That seems like the mm-hmm. type of area he would be looking for um and the response that came back from matt was uh you know you should be looking at being a, a cap casualty cap cut not you know he better be in the top two well i thought this was a response to mcpherson are you you're talking about mcpherson could be a cap cut where we're, we're, you have not enough faith in uh. mcpherson as a cap cut and so i said cap what are we, what are we talking about and so i had this i sent out a bunch of McPherson stats, which is are ridiculous when you put them together. I mean, he was mm. perfect from inside 50 last year. He's perfect on field goals in the playoffs for his career, including two game winners. He's got more 50 plus field goals than anybody in the league in the last three years. He's top third amongst qualifiers in percentage of beyond 50. I mean, he's he's got everything that suggests he would be there. Well, after his comments got absolutely destroyed i mean just flame throwing of the worst corners of the internet all up and down poor matt evans's mentions he comes back with like one of these my i'm sorry i'm sorry i wasn't trying to say that i was saying that jake elliott needs to be better <laughs> not not he's like i didn't this isn't what i asked for in the poor and i was just i just dropped a my bad dog my bad my bad on that one sorry about that so I'm sorry they had to deal with that and see what the the corners of the internet have when you attack Money Mac allegedly, even though he didn't. And that's totally my fault. In your defense, I thought I thought that's what he meant too. I did. I thought I he thought, was I referring really to McPherson, and it was just a misunderstanding. Yeah, uh, and I I do feel I do feel bad about it. So sorry about that. Matt. And what, what was the lag time between his tweet and then you coming back with those stats? Because I feel like it was pretty quick. I feel like you almost had those. Ready. No, I well, no, it was D. De- I would say I'd have to look, but okay. I would say about 15, 20 minutes because I okay. was compiling them and I did a couple other things and I compiled a little more. I'd say about 15 minutes probably. Okay. And then and then it was just 
it was just un really un everything was very unfortunate. <laughs> so sorry about that, Matt. Uh, all right, that will wrap us up. Uh, obviously, if if something big pops off tomorrow, obviously chance for a, another reaction pod. But we'll have some stuff coming out of Paycor Stadium tomorrow. So more of that coming on the pod this week. And then Who Day Light firing off, of course, on Friday. Send your questions in. You can send them to Mark. Uh, you can send them to me uh, on Twitter. You can email, whatever, uh, wherever you want. Of course, you can drop stuff into comments. And, and Mark goes and wades in there, even though I don't, and, and offers them for me. You drive that show with whatever you want to know. And so we'll have more of that coming for you. That'll be up uh, on Friday morning. So keep an eye out for that to get to you and whatever else happens we're here for you so all right our first uh pd and j live experience i, I feel like we missed route. an opportunity What's because that? we could have paid homage to mo egger because uc is playing live right now and we mm. could have copied his we could have put the uc game on as we were recording this and and reacted in real time to what was going on in the uc game i'd I know you saw. I don't know if other people watch it. It's worth. It's on Twitter. It's worth watching. He was trying right. to do his radio show while watching UC play West Virginia in a very stressful game, and it's 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 gold. I was in there for the first hour of that game, mm -hmm. and he did an excellent job because, and I knew it was going to be a be trouble because I mean we we were in the first minute and. It was like an, an idiotic turnover on the very first play of the game. And he's like, and we've got our first turnover. And you could see him like ready to start cursing. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be a long hour if we're already there. <laughs> uh, but he was very much just like blinders not looking. But there was no way to avoid it there uh, in the last couple of minutes of that game. So, yeah, no, definitely go check that out. It's good. Very good stuff. A few of those are going to be very uh, memeable, if yes. you will. For future reference, there is no question. So, all right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening and uh, checking us out here. Of course, subscribe on YouTube. Thank you for watching us here. And, uh, of course, wherever you get your podcasts, you can find The Growler. All right. We will talk to you next time. Have a good one, everybody.